In the second season of Megaforce, it started off with an episode called Pirate on the Boat. The remaining three rangers were trying to figure a way to fight back, since the Warstar's weapon testing has halted. So the majority of the Warstar retreated temporarily to their capital planet to crown Vrak as the universe's new emperor, while also fighting a civil war that broke out after the death of Vrak's father. However, the Earth is still blockaded by Armada ships. The morale was damaged when the Warstar abducted Gose, but Emma is still trying to stay hopeful, while Troy is brooding over the loss of Titanium Knight, and Gia is missing Jake. The team is also mourning the loss of Noah. Navi gave a new prediction. The phantom pilot of the skyship returns from the past. The rangers return to the ruins of a command cave to see if there are any way to fight the Omarda or if there are any backup plans by Gose. After the rangers try to boost the signal of their semi-repaired morphers, they are able to get a signal which contacted Zordon in the past. Turns out Gose was Zordon's pupil, and Zordon decided to send his current pupils to aid the rangers. Zordon also instructed the rangers never mention their mentor Gose and fellow rangers who were decimated in battle, or it will mess up the space-time continuum. Through time traveling, Zordon's apprentices arrive to Earth immediately on a red skyship. Even though the leader of the armada is gone temporarily, the blockade was still there. As mentioned earlier, the red skyship formed into the pirated Megazord and unleashed its unholy fury on the blockade. The warship didn't expect an attack from a one-man Megazord army. The Armada ships were all destroyed except for the flagship. The Megazord is a lot nimbler than previous Zords, but looks a lot weaker in terms of durability. The Megazord had a stalemate against the Armada flagship. At the end, the flagship was finally destroyed, but it badly damaged the Skyship. The Pirate Megazord lost the flight ability. Only the separate Zords can fly now. They will need upgrades in the future. The pilot and co-pilot landed and greeted the Rangers. The pilot is called Orion. Zordon rescued him from his dimension and brought him to Altar that began his training to become a wise old sage. Orion acts as the exposition of the group. He started off like a wild leader, basically reversed Andros off in space, and later he evolved to become a reserved mentor. Positive and outgoing though, happy-go-lucky. Orion is also mentioned that he has the ability to turn invisible, which was useful when he was a space fighter. The co-pilot was someone who looks exactly like Noah, but he calls himself Dr. Carver. He is a pacifist, and he hates fighting, similar to Billy in Mighty Morphin Season 1. He was the complete opposite of Noah. It was implied he's like a clone, thus the identical appearance. Apparently, Orion was learning how to operate the morphing grid and channel the energies from the morphing grid to the morphers, to become like Zordon. While being Zordon's apprentice, he also made his team of Power Rangers. His team of Power Rangers are pirate base, since he was once a pirate rebelling and robbing Warstar Empire ships. With the help of Dr. Carver, the pirate modes are the weakest team of Power Rangers ever to cross the past 20 seasons. Orion's power in producing biofuel cell was not as powerful as Gose or Zordon's or any of the previous teams. He acted as a wire and channeled some energies from previous Power Ranger teams, thus introducing the anniversary gimmick of turning into past Rangers. Legendary Ranger modes, a temporary few seconds of a power boost. Orion and Dr. Carver brought a bunch of ranger keys while he was working on creating powers, by copying the abilities of existing rangers first. The pirate powers are supplied by Orion, but the legendary powers are not. Orion needs to charge the morphing grid energies into the keys. It takes time to charge the keys, but the energies will be used up quickly. Thus, fights using the legendary keys were short. Note. There were many non-Power Ranger suits footage in Gokadger, so when Saban used those footage, they superimposed Power Ranger suits into the Sentai-only suits. Dr. Carver warned Armada would return, but not yet, so they could spend some time training with the Ranger Keys. Before they knew it, a Space Mafia gang of Divatox in this dimension showed up. Not the same Divatox from Turbo we know. Orion recognized the Space Mafia and told the group they are junkers and gangsters that collect scraps and leftovers from the Armada Empire and sell it on the black market. The Mafia boss, Lothor, declared to the Earthlings to help them gather all the alien scrap metals across the Earth or be incinerated. To show the Earth they meant business, they started ransacking the Earth and Rangers decided it's time to test their new powers. Emma became Pirate Pink and Gia became Pirate Yellow. Dr. Carver became Pirate Green. It was implied the Pirate Green Ranger key was supposed to be for Jake rather than Dr. Carver. He should be acting as a technician instead. Unfortunately, Jake was still missing. Here's a twist. Orion became Pirate Red, Troy became Pirate Blue. The color swap of Troy turning from red to blue was a nod to the Saban series. Whenever there's a suit change, the Red Ranger will usually go from red to blue, like Rocky and TJ. It is also better suited for their personalities, because Gosei Red and Gokai Blue wields melee weapons. And it's been clearly established Gokai Blue is a swordsman, so is Gosei Red. 
Gokai Red's fighting style is very unique when compared to Gosei Red, so that's why the two are different. And Gokai Green, Gosei Blue, and Gosei Black are clearly three different people, which fits the narrative better. Because I really can't see Gosei Black goofing off. The Rangers were able to fight hand in hand with the bootleg Exporks from the Mafia and the main villain of the episode. The first team they morph into was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, then In Space, then Operation Overdrive. All these core teams share the same color scheme as the first team of Power Rangers and the original Megaforce colors red, blue, yellow, pink, and black. After the monster was defeated, Troy asked if this will be their newest villain of the season. Orion told him no. The Space Mafia is nothing compared to the Armada. Divatox Gang is a joke compared. Orion demanded to speak to Lothor when they were retreating, after seeing how powerful the Pirate Rangers are. The two spoke through hologram. Orion asked if the Earthlings has crossed any of the Mafia's honors or rules. The Mafia scans the Earth then said no. Orion then asked if the Earth is protected by a mysterious power source. The Mafia scanned the planet, which in turn scanned the Morphing Grid as well. Orion then told him, You're not the first to come to a planet with a Morphing Grid. There have been so many invaders of Earth and in parallel dimensions. What happened to them? The Mafia scanned and saw all past Power Rangers season across the dimensions. When Megaforce was shown, Orion stepped in and said, Where are the Power Rangers? Got a headache yet? The Mafia immediately left in horror. Orion told the crew the Mafia will never be returning. Orion told Troy he's not there to take over Troy's position as leader, but Troy cuts him off and nominates him as leader. The team elected Orion to be the leader of this team. Orion tried to force a smile, but he knows he's not leader material. 